So the interesting part of this deck is the Genie of Zephyr's Moonglade Portal combo. Because the Genie casts a copy of the spell, rather than just copying the buffs, if you play Moonglade Portal on a friendly minion with the Genie on the board, you'll actually summon two six-cost minions. Someone left a comment on one of my videos about this combo, and they asked if I thought it was competitive or just kind of a gimmick. And my response was, it's probably, like, okay, but more toward the gimmicky side, and it's probably not better than just, like, a standard Yogg Druid or Malagos Druid or whatever flavor of Druid is popular at the moment. But I don't think it's terrible, and I like gimmicks, so here we are. Other than this combo, we have a lot of standard Druid cards in the list. We're playing Innervate because it's the most broken card in the game. Mark of the Wild is in the deck just for something else to go with the Genie. The Moonglade Portal is pretty expensive, so it's nice to have something a little bit cheaper that combos with it. I have Power of the Wild and Violet Teacher because I need some kind of win condition for the deck, so I guess it's just flooding the board with a bunch of stats. I'm not playing Malagos, I'm not playing Yogg Saron. There's not even any like Ancients of War or anything in the deck, so I need something that actually wins the game. And I guess my win condition is just putting a lot of stats on the board. And I like the Violet Teacher stuff because it's kind of more early or mid-game focused, whereas like the Malagos thing, you need to be on turn 10 to actually make plays. And since the Genie synergy is kind of slow anyway, I felt like a win condition that could be played earlier in the game made a little bit more sense. Plus when the Violet Teacher is generating a bunch of tokens, it just makes it more likely that you actually have stuff on board. So there's usually going to be another minion you can target with the Moonglade Portal or with the Mark of the Wild, so your Genie can actually do something. I'm playing Idis just because I wanted something else that took advantage of the Mark of the Wild. So I'm playing the Genies, so that kind of forces me into playing Mark of the Wild. And then because I'm playing Mark of the Wild, I wanted some more use out of the card. Idis also has some cute synergies in the deck. You can like Wrath it for one, and then still deal three damage to an enemy minion or to the enemy hero. So it's kind of like Wrath the opponent's face for three. That's always fun. Or if you're like super desperate, you need to kill a three health minion, but you also need to draw a card, you can kind of YOLO it if you need to. You can Living Roots your Idis for 2 and hopefully deal 3 damage to something. But of course we're going for the Mark of the Wild stuff. Then we have more standard Druid cards. I'm only playing 1 Nourish. Having only a single copy of Nourish does make the Fandral a little bit worse, but Fandral's pretty OP, so you just put it in your Druid deck anyway. Hopefully I don't lack card draw with only 1 Nourish. But my deck is more focused towards some early game stuff, so I don't think it's as important to draw 3 cards in the mid game. And it's not as important to get the 2 ramp to like go for some Malagos or Yogg or something. Hopefully I don't let card draw, but I do still have two Azure Drakes, I do still have two Wraths, Wild Growth, Raven Idol to some extent, so I think I'll hopefully be okay. Thorson's in the deck because it makes Violet Teacher shenanigans a lot more potent, it makes Fandral a little bit better. It's just a good card, but mostly it's in here because Genie Moonglade Portal costs 11 mana, and I would like for that to cost 10 mana or less. And finally we have Arcane Giant. I play like 20 spells, so this card's going to cost 0 mana pretty often. So a card that I'm notably not playing is Mulch. So I guess I'm hoping that my opponent doesn't play big minions. Not playing Mulch because it was hard to find room for it, basically. I'm also not playing Savage Roar. Maybe that's a mistake with all the Violet Teacher shenanigans, but again, just couldn't really find room for it. So if you're looking to cut a card, maybe the Idis, maybe the Idis just shouldn't be in the deck. Maybe a Mulch, maybe a Savage Roar. Pretty good options. It's also possible that the Violet Teacher Plus Power of the Wild stuff isn't really the way to go. Maybe you want to cut that, put in like a couple Moonfires, go for the Malagos route. And maybe this deck should just have a Yogg Saron in it. Maybe just cutting Idis for a Yogg Saron would be a good change. I don't have Yogg Saron right now because I disenchanted it for that sweet, sweet dust. But maybe Yogg Saron still belongs in the deck. I do think Yogg Saron is still a fine card. So there are a few different directions you can take the deck, but none of that matters as long as you have Genie and Moonglade Portal in the deck for the hot memes. And let's be honest, that's why we're all here, right? Coin Innervate Violet Teacher is pretty strong. I could also go Innervate Teacher into Coin Teacher, but I think Coin Innervate Teacher into Wrath is a lot better. I'll toss back the other Teacher, maybe I get another spell. If he plays something, I can Wrath it. If he doesn't, I can Mark of the Wild my guy. Or I guess if it's Totem Golem, maybe I just Mark of the Wild my guy anyway. I 
wonder if I'm supposed to not mark the wild my guy here. Going into his hex turn, I'd feel kind of bad if this guy got hexed. Maybe I just play the Raven Idol here. I really don't want to lose my Innervate Violet Teacher and Mark the Wild all to one hex. There are a lot of good cards presented to me here. I think I'll take the swipe, just to try to clear off the Shaman's board later. I think the Power of the Wild was like a really high risk card to choose right there, because if I just go like Wrath this turn and then follow it with Mark Power of the Wild, I can just get blown out by like Felnos Maelstrom Portal, or just a Lightning Storm or something like that. I think it was maybe a bit too risky. There are a few options here. I can Wrath for 1 and trade in the Violet Teacher. I can Wrath for 3 and trade in the 1-1. One, one. I can just Hero Power Violet Teacher. I can Mark the Violet Teacher. That'll leave her at 5-7. If I trade her in, she'll be a 5-4. I think I like using the Mark of the Wild here. It's not that easy of a card to get value out of, so this is kind of like a nice spot to play it. It's still bad for me if the Violet Teacher gets hexed here, but I did get some value out of her. I think I'm pretty happy to see the Lava Burst. Unfortunately, with the line of play that I took, I don't have a play this turn. One of the reasons I wanted to cycle the Wild Growth last turn was so that I could actually draw into a play this turn. But I would have had to leave my Violet Teacher down to 2 health, and then she would have just been too easy to kill, I think. So I can swipe this, but I just don't care that much. So I'm just going to ignore it and develop my 4-6. Another reason to not use Mark of the Wild last turn, of course, was because I had the Genie in my hand. I think I will swipe this turn, though. Question is, how do I deal the last one point of damage to the thing from below? I think I'm just going to use the hero power. I could cycle the wrath here, but I kind of have a lot of cards in my hand, so... It's not super important to cycle it, and I have a lot of health to work with, so I should use my hero power when I have the opportunity. It's weird to me that he's playing Morose and Lava Burst in the same deck. Because Morose is like a super greedy late game value card, but Lava Burst is like a kill you in the face kind of card. I have a lot of cards in my hand, so Thorson looks kind of appealing. But Azure Drake Wrath looks pretty nice on that 3 4. Thorson looks nice because I have a lot of cards, but Thorson's a lot better when you have a lot of spells, and I have a lot of minions. So I think I'm just gonna do this. Question is, what do I do about this totem? I think sending either of my minions into it is pretty justifiable. I guess I'll just trade off the 1 1. He's getting kinda low, so I like pushing 4 damage. I don't think I can ignore the totem, because that deck has probably Flame Tongue Totem and stuff like that. I guess I will just play Thorison now. I don't see too much reason to play Power of the Wild here. It might protect my Azure Drake from an AoE, but my other guys are big enough. My totems, my pretty totems. Oh, he's playing double Lava Burst. It's kind of weird. I'm three damage off lethal. If I just play Nourish here, I'm pretty likely to draw into lethal. Mark of the Wild does it. I think Mark of the Wild does it right, because I have 8 on board, this gives me 4 more, and then I have Hero Power, Power of the Wild. Got him. So you can beat Moreau's Double Lava Burst Shaman with this deck. Good matchup. Versus 
Doomhammer. I must protect the wild. I guess I'll keep Wrath. It's good against Tunnel Trog. I'm gonna play the roots here. Getting these 1-1s one on board makes it easy for me to wrath down a totem golem next turn. These guys also just kill totems. I'm gonna go ahead and play Raven Idol here. I don't have much that I can do with this hand next turn. My hand actually just kinda sucks, so I want some plays. I wonder if I take the power of the wild and just play it here. I don't think the Naturalize will be very good. The Living Roots is okay. If I take the Living Roots, I can't play it here because it's so weak to AoE. I think he would have played Maelstrom Portal that turn if he had it, but he can still draw into it. I think it's pretty nice just getting some stuff on the board right here. Turns my 1-1s into like actual minions. The Feral Spirit is a bit annoying. Wrath and Swipe kind of do the same thing here. Because it would be like Wrath here and then Hero Power plus Sapling into this, or just like Swipe here and then Sapling into this. So Wrath is a more flexible card, but Swipe is a more powerful card. I do play two Azure Drakes, so maybe having access to the spell damage Swipe is pretty nice. For no one. I think I'm actually going to Swipe here. I don't know if this is correct, but I think I like having the flexibility of the Wrath in my hand. There's a good chance that I just drop the genie this turn, but there's also some possibility that I want to go Nourish for mana and then play Wrath on the two remaining mana. Wrath also does well with Fandral. Rockbiter is actually like the most annoying card he could have right there. If he didn't have that, I could just drop genie here, and then if it lived, if both of my minions lived, I could have played the Moonglade portal next turn for some immense value. But now if I drop the genie, I won't have a Moonglade portal target on the following turn. Hmm. So maybe I just ramp, or maybe I just play the 4-6, or maybe I just draw at this point. I think I'm just going to play out the 4-6. No Keeping the Shaman's board in check is the most important thing, and the 4-6 is pretty good at just punching into stuff. Right. 7-7's seven, pretty big. I can swipe Wrath it. I guess I could also run in my guy and wrath it, and then innervate out a nourish or something. Innervate out a moonglade portal even. But I think I like just removing it with spells. Keep my 4-6 on the board. Punch him a bit. That card tells me that this is probably a Nazoth Shaman. I don't think I've seen anything else to indicate this would be an Azoth Shaman, other than just the passive opener, I guess. So the plays here are Nourish and Moonglade Portal. I feel like the right play might just be use the Moonglade Portal here. I don't get the combo value out of it, but I do get a big thing on board. I'm pressuring him out a lot, and if he's playing an Azoth Shaman, his late game is going to be pretty scary. Probably a lot scarier than mine. So I guess I'm just going to play the Moonglade Portal here. It's a pretty terrible 6-drop. That's pretty scary. Hopefully it hits me in the face. I definitely need to draw some cards here. I don't play Mulch, so I don't have any answer to this guy. I think I'm actually in pretty bad shape right now. Go ahead and get some more cycle going. Do I want to kill this guy? It gets some health value out of my dude before Rag can potentially kill it. I guess I like hitting into it. It also prevents the slime from running into Azure Drake and then maybe a lightning storm kills it or something like that. I'm kind of surprised that deck has Doomhammer in it. What? Was that a misclick? 
Am I missing something? Did it actually make sense to attack face with Doomhammer there? Because I really feel like it didn't. Unfortunately, I'm one mana off from my sick Itis Genie Mark of the Wild play. I guess I'll start with Azure Drake here. There's only three mana, huh? I think I'm just going to throw down Itis here, though. The Giant also combos super well with this Genie Mark of the Wild play. I think next turn I can go Wild Growth, Excess Mana, Giant, Genie, Mark. Hitting these rag shots. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to cast double mark this turn. Thorson's too slow, I think. This is pretty good because I get something that's out of range of Ragnaros. So even if he kills off the genie with something else, then he still doesn't kill the giant. But the most likely thing here is he hexes the giant, sends the Doomhammer in, and then Rag hits the genie. That would really suck. But I can't really play around that at this point. Who knows what secrets will uncover? My shield for Argon. Ooh, that's kind of rough. So is that lethal? I think I'm one off. I don't think there are very many results off Moonblade Portal that can give me lethal, but I can definitely rape Nidal into it. Actually, pretty easily. There are a lot of cards that give me lethal here. Starfire is one of them. Leave this I don't think I keep any of these cards. I really want Wild Growth Innervate in this matchup. I really want Living Roots. My hand is really, really bad right now, so definitely gonna need some help. Luckily, I'm Druid, so I can just kind of draw Innervate, and then my hand is a lot better. Fiery Bat gives me something to do with my hero power this turn. Living Roots is really bad right there because he trades it into one of the 1-1s one -ones and then the other one has a 50% chance to die to the death rattle. And it might be better to just use Living Roots as removal at this point. Living Roots on that guy is pretty good. I don't think there's much merit in making the 1-1s one -ones there. Realistically, they probably just traded the Toad anyway. I picked up the swipe, which is nice. So hopefully he'll go like Animal Companion into Misha here, and then I swipe it, and then he does nothing, and then I can start playing my minions. No hover, please. Leok and Misha were the same thing there. They were both getting swiped. Hover would have been bad because I would have had to swipe it anyway, and I would have just taken four damage. So the plays here are Azure Drake and Genie of Zephyrs. Obviously Azure Drake draws me into another card, which is pretty good considering I might want to play Thorison next turn. But the Genie has more health, so theoretically it's harder for him to kill. But it's not that easy for a Hunter to deal the one extra damage to the Azure Drake. I think I actually just like the Azure Drake here. The difference between 1 and 3 health against a Hunter on turn 5 I don't think is that significant. Oh, okay. I guess this punishes my play a lot. Perhaps that was a mistake. I think I do just play Thoris in here. It's pretty bad, because this trade happens. I guess I really should have played the Genie last turn. But it discounts a lot of my stuff. It means that it'll be easy for me to like cycle this Raven Idol coming up. Makes it a lot easier for me to land a Genie Mark combo. Playing Tomb Spider, huh? That card's actually in his deck, right?
Another Moonglade portal. Go ahead and see what I can get off this Raven Idol. Swipe would be nice. Does Innervate do anything this turn? Innervate would allow me to go Genie, Genie, Mark. If I go Genie, Genie, Mark, I have two 6 8 taunts. He can easily kill one. It's probably not that easy for him to kill the other, which means I'll have a Genie left over next turn. But it's not that easy for me to draw into a minion to cast the Moonglade portal on. For no one. But even if I can just make a nice trade, Moonglade portal on a 6 8 taunt is pretty solid. And these other cards just suck. This is a pretty strong turn. Well played. My thanks to you. Hopefully that well played isn't followed by double deadly shot. Just the teeth I, have. I was really, really scared of a hyena right there. I think he's one off from clearing. Please go all in so I can Moonglade portal it up. Unfortunately, I don't get any double six drops, but this is still a pretty solid play. He couldn't deal with this last turn, so heal it up. Wind Fury Harpy, huh? That does a lot of damage, especially if I draw another Mark of the Wild. So do I hit into the Kindly Grandmother? Probably not, honestly. If I hit into the Kindly Grandmother, he just gets a 3 power minion to trade with next turn instead of a 1 power minion. I don't think he's playing double Tundra Rhino, so it probably doesn't really matter. Well, this is the dream, right? Get the damage on these guys before casting the Moonglade portal, so I get a nice heal. And then I have enough mana to play an 8-8. Well, that got out of control really quick. My thanks. This guy's deck is weird, so he might be playing like Deathwing or something. Is he dead this turn though? Oh my gosh. This probably isn't good enough. The Tiger gets a nice trade on the Wind Fury Harpy. But then the other dogs don't do anything. I mean, it's still a pretty good clear from him. Puts both of those guys in tiger range. Considering how gross my last turn was, that was a pretty good response from him. But I don't think it's going to be good enough. So I have 18 damage here. Unfortunately, Itis, Wrath, Itis for lethal isn't a thing. Just play out the teacher, put stats on the board, punch him in the face. If he plays Call of the Wild, he's just dead. Alright, looks like I won. I think I misplayed pretty hard on turn 5, should've just played Genie instead of Azure Drake. But it worked out.